Hi, everyone, and welcome to this installment of the Aga Khan Museum series of Curator from Home videos that offer in-depth explorations of works from our collection. My name is Michael Chagnon, and I'm a curator at the museum. Today, I'd like to explore an illustration from one of the best known and most beloved manuscripts in the collection, a copy of Anvaris Soheli, or The Lights of Canopus. The text includes over 100 fables that are aimed uh, to illustrate important principles on effective and ethical rulership. So it falls into a literary genre that's known as mirrors for princes. Uh, Anvara Suheli was composed in the Persian language at the end of the 15th century. However, its author, Hossein Baez Kashafi, acknowledges in the preface that he drew upon much earlier versions of these stories including the well-known 8th century cycle of animal fables in Arabic, known as Kalila and Dimna, which itself drew on ancient Sanskrit texts from India. In other words, Kashafi's version is a medieval reworking of a string of earlier reworkings with roots in ancient times. There are many known manuscript copies of Anvar Soheli. The Aga Khan Museum's copy was produced in the late 16th century and includes over 100 illustrations. The illustration that I'd like for us to look at today is this one. Uh, so we, we can see the image on the screen here. What it shows is a beautiful multicolored crane-like bird taking flight into the deep blue night sky while on the right, a tree burns with scrolling flames executed in gold. It's a striking image, but the question is, what exactly is being shown here? What story does this picture illustrate? Well, when we read the words on the page, we can identify the story as coming from the section of Kashafi's text that, text that reproduces the Kalila Wadimna stories. Kalila and Dimna are two jackals who are members of the Lion King's retinue. Of the two jackals, Dimna is the more ambitious. He wishes to elevate himself at the lion's court and so contrives various intrigues to make this happen, even though his brother Kalila advises against doing so, advises him against doing so. Uh, the two jackals, the two brothers trade stories back and forth to illustrate their points. So this story uh, that is illustrated here tells uh, of a couple sparrows. It's a story that Dimna tells about a couple sparrows whose hatchlings are repeatedly snatched away and eaten by an evil hawk. Eventually, the, the sparrows are able to raise some children, but they live with the worry that the hawk will come back soon and take away their young again. One day, one of the sparrows sets out to seek advice from someone who might help him. He happens upon a creature that he doesn't recognize, a salamander. And he figures that the salamander must be a type of strange bird. So he goes up to the salamander and he pours out his heart. And the salamander tells him not to worry, there's a solution. Now, it's helpful to know from ancient times through the medieval period, Salamanders were believed to be impermeable to flame, and in fact that they lived and thrived in fires. So this idea helps explain what happens next. The salamander who offers the sparrow some help gathers his crew one night to sabotage the nest of the evil hawk. They drop flaming materials into the nest and set it ablaze while the hawk is asleep and he totally burns down the nest and he dispenses with the hawk and his kin. Kashafi puts a fine point on the story by quoting some poetry. Quote, the tyrant, here meaning the hawk, the tyrant raised a conflagration by his oppression, but when the flames arose, they consumed him first of all. That's actually the line of poetry right above our picture. When the flames arose, they consumed him first of all. Having told this story, Dimna tells his brother that the point he's trying to make is that even if one's enemy is powerful, with effort, you can still find a way to triumph over him. In other words, Dimna the Jackal is saying that his efforts to claw his way to the top of the lion's court will prove successful in the end. So let's just go back to the picture for a moment. Uh, now that we know the story, 
we can identify the, the hawk's nest on the right is the, what's being burned in the tree. Um, however, the bird on the left doesn't appear to correspond to any of the animals that are told in the tale. It doesn't look like a hawk, much less a salamander. So the question is, did the painter misread the text? Did he make a mistake somehow? Uh, if you recall, I, I think that, that this is a really interesting point. If you recall, the sparrow in the story doesn't recognize the salamander. He actually describes him, in fact, as some kind of strange and marvelous bird. So what I think is going on here, and this is something I'm researching a bit more, is that the painter actually didn't make a mistake, but he's trying to show us what the sparrow saw, a strange bird, rather than what the creature actually was, a salamander. And if that's the case, then this is a really interesting picture because it suggests that the painter wanted to place us, the viewer, in the same position and in the same mindset as the sparrow. So I wanted to share this with you. It's a, a picture that really grabbed me because um, not only are we researching this manuscript to show in an upcoming exhibition in the fall, opening in November 2020, uh, but uh, I wanted to um, uh, just have us sort of think about what it is that painters do to sort of um, tell us the story that we're looking at through pictures and how he positions us and how, what kind of mindset, what kind of manipulation is going on with the images. Um, that's uh, I want it's just something I wanted to share with you. Um, but I also wanted to just have a little coda to this session by talking about the text that's underneath the image. If you, we can go back to the image for a second. Um, and if you can see here, there's a the line of poetry at the very top next to the moon. And below there's a whole series of lines of text, which is, these are, this is prose text. And that also comes um, from the, the story. It's a sort of end, uh, a coda to the text. This is where Dimna explains to his brother Kalila that there are six kinds of danger that can arise for a ruler and bring calamity to a nation. The first is that his followers become disappointed in him, and this brings di disgrace to his uh, wise advisors, to the people around him. The second is war and strife. The third is the ruler's own potential undue appetite for worldly pleasures that distract him. The fourth is natural disaster and plague. The fifth is his own hasty temper. And the sixth, and I quote, is ignorant stupidity. So that's a, a characteristic that leads him to war in times of peace and laziness at times when action is needed. I'll leave you with these kernels of wisdom from the ancient past and let you explore some more ingenious illustrations from this truly marvelous manuscript in the Aga Khan Museum's collection. We'll provide a link in the description uh, that'll take you to the museum's, uh, to, to the manuscript's museum number, which is AKM 289, so you can explore further. Uh, always, please do let us know what you think about this and other installments of our Curator From Home series. And please visit our Museum Without Walls portal at agahanmuseum.org. And if you're in Toronto, please make sure you stop by and visit us in person. The museum is open and we can't wait to welcome you. I hope you have a great day. Thanks very much.